to freeze water, you don't have to be the character Sub-Zero from the beloved game Mortal Kombat. Nowadays, you can just put your water in the freezer, wait a few minutes, and the job is done. But what do you do if you want to freeze a few million liters of the liquid that are moving at you at a speed of 500 miles or 800 kilometers per hour? It's at such a pace that the most destructive waves on the planet, tsunami, sweep across the open oceans, transforming an enormous body of water into a giant hunk of ice would be a challenge even for the likes of Sub-Zero. But I can tell you what it will take to accomplish such a thing. By the way, before I forget, this really cool idea for the video was given to us by our active subscriber, RGC. So let's thank him with likes. Thanks, dude. Now, before moving on to the main question, let's remember just why these deadly waves do occur. As there is no smoke without fire, so a tsunami is not an independent phenomenon. It appears as a result of underwater earthquakes, landslides, volcanic eruptions, meteorite falls, or comets. Basically, any large disturbance in the water can raise waves tens or hundreds of feet high. And to add insult to injury, getting away from a tsunami is almost impossible. Once this gigantic displacement of water reaches land, the water moves at a speed of 6 to 12 miles or 10 to 20 kilometers per hour. Unless you happen to already be in a car on a road leading in the right direction and can drive away from this multi-million ton liquid monster, the streets will turn into small rivers before you can even think about getting into a vehicle. Getting out of the path of a tsunami is also rarely an option, unless you're lucky enough to be near one of its edges. The total tsunami width averages from between 60 to 120 miles. That's 96 to 123 kilometers. But if this terrifying natural disaster catches you in mid-ocean, you might just survive, as long as you are as far as possible from the coastline. If you are aboard a ship and a tsunami sneaks up behind you and land is not visible, you can relax. Interestingly, under such conditions, the height of a tsunami will be a maximum of a measly two feet or about 60 centimeters, and not an inch more. You might not even notice it passing by. But everything changes fundamentally when this false tide reaches the shore. The massive wave is now drastically and suddenly reduced in length, its energy and mass bunching up, whereupon it begins climbing, reaching a height of as much as 100 feet, that's 30 meters or even more. 10 to 15 minutes of this colossal assault is all it takes to bring everything to hell and ruin, flooding entire cities and anything else that stands in the way of this ruthless, relentless elemental beast. The most powerful and highest tsunami on record occurred in the year 1958 near Alaska. The wave rose to a record 1,720 feet, that's 524 meters. This is higher than the Eiffel Tower or the former World Trade Center in New York. This wasn't just a tsunami, it was a mega tsunami. This wave of waves had so much force that it uprooted thousands of trees and it also stole away about a hundred human lives. And although it was the most powerful tsunami recorded to date, it wasn't the deadliest. In 2011, a large-scale tsunami disaster in Japan, where the word tsunami originates, sadly claimed the lives of 15,000 people. And prior to that, in 2004, a gigantic super tsunami that started off the coast of Indonesia resulted in the deaths of over 230,000 people across 14 countries. As much as we would like for such disasters to remain in the past, the likelihood of a new tsunami appearing is actually increasing every day, according to some researchers. At first glance, the reasoning behind the increasing chance for more tsunamis is far from obvious. But scientists say it's due to global warming. Melting glaciers could result in ice landslides and the fall of huge, rocky, icy slopes. If large enough, 
such a thing could result in a devastating giant wave. As a matter of fact, the record-breaking tsunami near Alaska occurred for just the same reason. Such dark prospects are stimulating the best minds in the world to figure out how to save millions of lives from future waterborne cataclysms. A physicist at the University of Cardiff, one Professor Usama Kadri, has proposed to solve this issue using sound. For example, by blasting at full volume the latest Justin Bieber album, as a result of which the tsunami will simply be scared away. Okay, I kid. In reality, the scientist was referring to the use of gravitational sound waves. Their energy should be enough, he theorizes, to disperse the impending giant wave. Though, to be sure, nobody yet knows how to create such a device capable of first predetermining the approach of a tsunami, and secondly, generating and releasing such a gravitational sound assault in response. Not even Professor Kadri himself. There is a chance that in the future this problem will be solved. Meanwhile, scientists are still considering all other possible options for combating tsunamis. The Japanese recently decided to approach this conundrum by building a giant wall along the coast of their island nation. In order to protect the land of the rising sun from these giant waves, the length of the Great Japanese Wall will be more than 248 miles, or about 400 kilometers, with a height of about 50 feet or 15 meters. However, skeptics believe that such a structure, although it would look pretty darn cool, would be unlikely to protect the country in every tsunami emergency. Tsunamis that reach higher than the intended wall have been recorded throughout history. In addition, building such a construction along the Japanese coastline is going to have a highly negative impact on the environment in those regions. But even if Japan does fence itself off from tsunamis with concrete walls, what will the rest of the planet do? It's time to call Sub-Zero for some help, because we're going to fight this monster with cold. The idea of nipping one of these H2O beasts in the bud before it reaches the shore, when it's just getting started, may seem quite obvious at first. But this is a common misconception. In order to freeze a wave below the surface, at a fairly hefty depth, would require turning an entire ocean into ice, which is completely and utterly impossible. Therefore, it'd be better and more practical to start our freezing process closer to the shore where the waves gain their maximum height. At this stage, we need to toss out all our preconceptions and beliefs about water freezing at a temperature of 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius. For fast-moving streams of water, lower temperatures are required. The volume of the tsunami will be somewhere around 100 million liters. So to turn this amount of water into a glacier, we'll need a temperature of around minus 148 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about minus 100 degrees Celsius. Hearing these numbers, Sub-Zero begins to beat a hasty retreat. But this is no problem, we can cope without him. Though for a freezing operation of such scale, we'll need to arm ourselves with a lot of freezers. Did I say a lot of freezers? Yes, we'll need about 900,000 of these babies. And they'll all need to work continuously for about a month. In the end, they'll use approximately 13 million 375,000 kilowatts of energy. This is the power required to glaciate the wave. Our only problem is, as you may have guessed, we need to do it a lot faster than a month. Tsunamis, as previously mentioned, though not exactly speedy, move a lot faster than that, and before you know it, the pretty little metropolis you call home will be underwater. So, let's imagine that somehow, We've managed to do the impossible and the tsunami is now frozen. But really, this ice sculpture is going to need to be moved somewhere, otherwise it will melt and complete its destructive work. You could try to crush it and hand out martinis to everyone nearby to celebrate the passing of the tsunami danger. 
but this will devastate neighboring settlements with the scourge of alcoholism, thus ruining local economies. It's probably a better idea to take this wealth of ice somewhere far away with the help of big trucks. The most suitable option for work like this is something called the Belaz 75710, the biggest dump truck in the world. With a total loading capacity of a gargantuan 450 tons, we'll only need a mere 220,000 of these giants to cope with our load of tsunami ice. Ah, but there is a slight problem. There are only three Balaz dump trucks in the whole world. We do have some other options. For example, there's the Kamaz dump truck with a loading capacity of 40 tons. It's no slouch. But unfortunately, it will take 2.5 million of these machines to get the job done. And again, they simply don't exist in numbers like these. In fact, to even just get started, we'd have to use every existing dump truck on the planet. Long story short, freezing a tsunami and the subsequent transportation of its ice to another location is an almost impossible task for mere mortals to try to perform. It's difficult to imagine such a thing as a frozen tsunami happening in the natural world. But in all actuality, something similar does occur in real life. They call this phenomenon, what else? The ice tsunami. It is, of course, not a real tsunami. But the sight of such a spectacle is exciting nonetheless. This phenomenon occurs not in oceans, but in lakes. When a thaw comes, the first cracks develop on the solid ice mirror on the surface of the lake. Strong winds then send the scattered blocks of ice towards the coast, as a result of which they split and start piling up on top of each other. These solid ice waves may even come ashore, which scares the screaming bejesus out of the locals. And sometimes, ice rising from an ice tsunami can even invade human dwellings if they're too close to the shoreline. However, this phenomenon isn't particularly dangerous. At least, you can run away from it. Heck, you can walk away from it. In contrast to a real tsunami, which, I think we now finally understand, cannot be thwarted by low temperatures. Though you know, perhaps we can cool down something else to stop a tsunami. As I said, global warming and melting glaciers are only increasing the likelihood of a tsunami. And if we can manage to reduce this effect by getting the temperature of the planet a few degrees lower, then there will be one less reason for these destructive waves to form in the first place. The only question is how to do it. Freezers are surely out of the question. I know that I have the coolest and most imaginative subscribers on all of YouTube, so if you happen to have a crazy or merely interesting idea for a video, let me know by writing in the comments. Those who offer the best ideas will definitely get into one of the newest videos. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Give us a thumbs up, press the bell button to receive notifications about new videos, and don't forget to tell your friends about us, because everybody digs Riddle.